Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in today's session we're going to be taking your brilliant models and putting them onto Sketchfab. This particular model that I'll be putting onto Sketchfab is from the course Fantasy Castle on the Floating Island. You can see those playlists in the description. Do check out the other playlists on my channel for beginner courses. And if you want a more detailed course, there's my character course available to purchase now. And again, all the links in the description. This video is sponsored by Sketchfab, which is a great place to buy and sell and view 3D models online. I've used it for a few years now to sell models. And what's really fantastic is that you can view the faces and topology of the model before you buy so you know exactly what you're getting. You can create an excellent portfolio on there so you can show off your work to its fullest. Links in the description. Okay, so here's my model and I'll just go through a few things which you need to do before you export. So if I click on different objects like the dragon, for example, and I'll just control spacebar so you can see all the nodes. This is my node setup for the textures, but you can see it's not plugged in because I baked all that out onto one single texture. If you need to know more about baking, it's fairly straightforward. Just check out the link in the description or search for my baking playlist on my channel. You'll need to do that for any texture that has some sort of node setup plugged into it. So even this roughness, I should really bake this out, but I'm probably not going to use it because it only had a tiny bit of influence anyway. So you should just have a single texture like this plugged into your principal BSDF because that's what you'll need to set up in Sketchfab. I'll press Control Spacebar again to get back to, to my UV editing workspace. And if you look at the shader editor here, you can see that all my textures have a single texture going in to the principal BSDF. Now I did just click on the castle and that's got a slight hue and saturation. It's minor, so I'm not going to bake that out. I'm not too worried about it. So once again, just make sure that all your objects have a single texture going in or no texture because that's easy to set up in Sketchfab. I'm not going to talk about animations. I'll leave that for another time. But if you have got any characters that have a pose, like my dragon had a pose initially, I just applied my armature. That way it won't get confusing in Sketchfab. It can handle that, but it's just simpler to apply it. Okay, so at this point, you should be ready to select all your objects and export them as an FBX. Now it's worth saying before I do that, that there are Sketchfab export add-ons, but I actually prefer doing it this way. I just find it a little bit easier and a tiny bit less glitchy. So I'll go file, export. You can do an FBX or an OBJ. I tend to stick with FBX. With the FBX, just make sure that you have selected objects ticked. Then press export. Now, if that takes a long time, then you might have extra objects selected that you didn't want. Okay, so let's get across to Sketchfab. You want to click on the upload option at the top here and you can drag and drop your model into this space. So here's my file. I can drag and drop that in and press continue. Whilst it's uploading, put in a title, give it a good description. Make sure you choose a category as well. Sometimes a little bit tricky, but I think this is probably character and creatures perhaps. It might possibly come under architecture a bit, so I'll put that on there as well. And some tags. So let's save that and let's go to edit 3D settings. And now we're able to edit all the materials and add a few effects for our model. So if I go to materials, the first thing that comes up is the castle. And for the castle, I've got a texture. So if I press the down arrow next to the base color and go to texture, underneath that there's import textures. I can then select all my textures and press open. And now I can choose the texture I need, which is castle base color. And that appears on my object. And you've got the roughness and glossiness here. So it's got no glossiness at all. So it's all the way down to zero, which is how I had it in Blender. Okay, so the next item. Now the one at the top here is called black. That's slightly different because that's actually my dragon's eyeball right in the middle there. And it was able to understand that in Blender, I had a black base color and it's pretty much copied that. So there's nothing I need to change with the eyeballs there. For things like the dragon, I will need to add the base color for that as well. So let's press on this down arrow again, open our texture, choose texture this time and dragon full color. And the color comes in. It's a tiny bit glitchy, but that's actually from my bake in Blender. I was rushing a touch. The other thing we've got for this is a normal map. So I can come down to my normal maps here and turn that on where it says normal map, make sure that's selected and choose my normal map. Now for them to work properly from Blender, we need to flip the green and now my normal map is working. You may want to change the glossiness we're on at the moment. If you want it to be the same as Blender, then choose the roughness and you want to just adjust that a bit. 
Also, it looks a bit plasticky at the moment, so we could try the subsurface scattering here. I'll turn that on and click on the drop down arrow. It looks very sort of see through at the moment. We can probably change the texture to something like three and give it a bit of subsurface scattering to make it look less plasticky. And I think that looks all right. So I'll just go through each of my textures and hook them up. It's worth saying as well that you can click on objects in the viewport. Here I've got treetop and I can just select the treetop texture. And we're pretty much there. The windows is the last thing. They had a lot of glossiness to them. So now when we move around, they've got a bit more shine. So you want to put the roughness right down or the glossiness right up. And that looks all right. The next thing we can change then is the lighting. So at the moment we've got an HDRI in the background and we can change those as we see fit. And you can rotate them as well to give you different sort of shadows. I think I like this one the most. You can set these as background as well. I don't particularly like doing that. I'd rather set up a background of my own. And for that, we can go to the scene and there's background here and we can give it a particular color. You can choose images, but you need a pro account if you want to use your own image. I think a light blue sort of goes with this quite nicely. Gives it the idea of sky. You can also in the lighting use actual lights as well. If I turn those on, you can see some lights there and they create shadows and light it from different angles. I actually quite like how that's looking, so I'm not going to change it, but you can click on the lights and move those around as you see fit. There's also post-processing filters. We can use screen space reflections, but we haven't really got any reflections apart from in the windows. So it's probably not worth turning those on just for the sake of download speeds and things. There's things like sharpness, depth of field, and you can change the parameters of this as well. A vignette can be quite nice, sort of frame your piece. And it's got things like bloom, which could help make it look a bit more fantasy. I just bring the intensity down a little bit. And this all happens instantly in the viewport, which I think is great. You can also change the color balance. Probably needs a little bit of it here. But what might be easier if I try the tone mapping first, and let's just try a few approaches here. Quite like the filmic. And you can really go to town and change up the whole look really. There we go, it looks a bit more Disney now. It's also got things like anti-aliasing on by default. There's other things up here as well. There's annotations and I could annotate and say, here's a dragon, here's a castle and so forth. You've got animations as well and they've got details of how to upload the animations. There's virtual reality. So if someone's looking in virtual reality, we can change the size and position of that person and you can add sounds as well. Now, once you're happy, try and find a view that you think looks good, maybe someone like that and save view. That will be the front piece now for this piece of artwork. The settings are saved up the top there. I'm going to exit now and go back to this area here. Over on the right hand side, you've got different categories of who can see it, but that again, you need an upgrade for. And you can also sell your model if you click on the store. And I'm going to price this for $5 for anybody that wants to support me in Sketchfab with a standard license, which generally means they can't sell it on in some way. And I'm going to save and publish. And then of course you can share it on social media. Okay, so there we have it. Our models beautifully presented on Sketchfab. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.